In the face of an enemy invasion on U.S. soil, how prepared are you to defend your family and community? Hello, fellow preppers. It's time to talk about something crucial. The preparations we need in the event of a mainland attack in the U.S. Are you ready to face such a challenge? Do you know what it takes to be truly prepared? This isn't just about having a few supplies in your basement. We're talking about critical preparations that could mean the difference between survival and disaster. Do you have what it takes to protect yourself and your loved ones? Today, I'm going to walk you through the eight critical preps you absolutely must stockpile. This isn't fear-mongering. It's about being prepared for the worst while hoping for the best. How well equipped is your shelter? Are your supplies sufficient to sustain you for an extended period? Without further ado, here are the eight critical prepping items to stockpile for a mainland attack in the U.S. 8. Defense Equipment Attention U.S. residents, this is crucial. For self-protection in a homeland threat, prioritize defensive gear and strategies. Having firearm ownership is critical. Choose a gun that's comfortable and train extensively to master it. Handguns suit close-range defense, while rifles are better for distance. Be aware of local firearm laws and maintain a sufficient ammo stock peel, factoring in budget and storage. Ensure safe firearm storage and regular maintenance. For protective gear, consider bulletproof vests. Level 3A. Vests typically stop handgun rounds, but for higher threats, opt for Level 3 or IV. Choose a well-fitting vest, ensuring mobility and coverage of vital areas. Regularly inspect vests for wear and replace when necessary. Look for vests with extra features like stab protection or concealment options and ensure they're NIJ certified. Balance the trade-off between protection level and mobility. Designate a secure room at home for safety, with solid walls and minimal windows, storing emergency supplies and defensive gear nearby. Educate your family on emergency protocols. 7. Reliable Communication Systems In the event of an attack or crisis, maintaining communication is vital. Discuss ways to ensure open lines of communication, even if traditional systems fail. Two-way radios are crucial for local communication, independent of cell networks that might be compromised in emergencies. Choose a model with good range, battery life, and access to emergency or no AA channels for critical updates. Consider a ham radio for broader communication. They require a license and training, but offer local to international reach. Acting as a private network during system failures. Satellite phones are invaluable for global communication in areas without cell service. They're expensive and need a subscription, but they're reliable in extreme situations. Emergency scanners provide real-time updates from emergency services, aiding in informed decision-making during crises. It's not just owning these devices. It's about strategic placement, maintenance, and ensuring everyone knows how to use them. Regular checks, charging, and backup power sources like solar chargers or extra batteries are essential. Use these tools to stay informed and share information with your community, fostering mutual support and information exchange in times of crisis. 6. Home Security and Surveillance Systems Beefing up your home security, especially when there's a risk of a mainland attack. It's not just about feeling safe. It's about being prepared and proactive in protecting your family and your home. Starting with surveillance cameras. These are not your average cameras. We're talking high-tech stuff here. Modern surveillance cameras come with features like night vision, motion detection, and the ability to watch what's happening from your smartphone or computer. This means you can keep an eye on your property day and night and get alerts if anything odd pops up. It's like having your own personal security guard who never sleeps. Next, doors and windows. These are your home's first line of defense. You might want to consider getting solid core doors and deadbolt locks. And for your windows, how about some security films? They make the glass tough to break. If you want to go the extra mile, window bars or grills can add that additional layer of protection. It's all about making it as hard as possible for someone to break in. An alarm system is like the cherry on top. A good one not only scares off intruders with a loud siren, but also alerts you to any security breaches. Make sure your system has door and window sensors and motion detectors. And here's a pro tip. Choose a system that works even during power outages or network disruptions. You want your alarm to be your steadfast sentinel, come what may. Don't forget about lighting. 
It's amazing how effective a well-placed floodlight can be. Go for motion-activated ones. They not only save energy, but also have the element of surprise on their side, lighting up to startle and expose intruders. But hey, installing these things is just part of the journey. You've got to keep them in tip-top shape. Regularly check and maintain your security systems. And it's not just you who needs to know how this stuff works. Make sure your whole family is in the loop. Keep a low profile too. If you've got all these security measures, it's best not to broadcast it to the world. You want to be the house that intruders pass by, not the one they're curious about. Also, have you thought about power backups? In case of a power outage, having a generator or solar panels can be a lifesaver, keeping your security systems up and running. 5. Power Generators Reliable Backup Power Source We need to talk about power generators and why they're not just a convenience, but a necessity in times of crisis, like a mainland attack or a natural disaster. First, let's get into the different kinds of generators out there, because not all are created equal, and the right choice can make a huge difference. You've got your portable generators, which are the go-to for many. They're easy to move around and set up, and they run on fuels like gasoline, diesel, or propane. Just remember, they need to be used in well-ventilated areas because of carbon monoxide emissions. Safety first, always. Then there are inverter generators. These are the quiet achievers, literally. They're much quieter than traditional generators and are perfect for your electronics like laptops and smartphones because they give out stable power. If you're working from home or need to keep devices running, these are a solid choice. But if you're looking for something that kicks in automatically and can handle the whole house, Standby generators are where it's at. These are installed permanently and usually run on natural gas or propane. Imagine not having to lift a finger during a blackout. These generators have got your back. Now, fuel is a big part of this conversation. Propane is a winner for long shelf life and clean burning. Gasoline is everywhere but doesn't store as long, even with stabilizers. Diesel? It's efficient has a longer shelf life, and these generators are tough as nails. And let's not forget solar power generators. No fuel needed, silent, and perfect for smaller needs or charging your gadgets. When it comes to brands, you've got choices. Honda, Yamaha, and Generac are solid for portable and inverter generators. For those robust standby generators, look at Generac, Kohler, and Cummins. They're known for quality and durability. Installation and safety can't be overlooked. Standby generators usually need a pro to install them. Always use portable generators outside. Carbon monoxide is no joke. Keep up with maintenance, like checking oil and fuel, and run them periodically to make sure they're ready when you need them. And if you can, have more than one type of fuel on hand, stored safely and according to local laws. 4. Fuel it's not just about having enough fuel, but also about understanding the different types you might need and how to store them properly. This is crucial because each type of fuel has its own shelf life and storage needs, and how much you'll need totally depends on how you plan to use it. Gasoline. It's a no-brainer for your cars and some generators, but remember, it doesn't last forever. Even with stabilizers, you're looking at a shelf life of about three to six months. So, keep an eye on that. Diesel. If you've got vehicles or generators that run on diesel, you're in luck because it lasts a bit longer than gasoline, typically around 6 to 12 months if you store it right. Propane is another key player. It's great for some generators and cooking equipment. The best part? Propane can last pretty much indefinitely, as long as you keep it in well-maintained tanks. And don't forget about kerosene. It's a solid choice for heating and lighting, with a decent shelf life of about 1 to 2 years when stored properly. Now, how much should you stockpile for, say, a six-month period? For gasoline and diesel, start by figuring out your average weekly usage and then multiply that by 26 weeks. Add a bit extra as a buffer for unexpected situations. For propane, think about how much your generator and cooking appliances use. A standard 20-pound tank can keep a mid-size grill going for around 18 to 20 hours. For generators, you'll need to check their specific consumption rate. With kerosene, base your estimate on the burn rate of your heaters or lamps. Generally, a gallon can give you about 8 to 12 hours of heat in a portable heater. 
Storage and safety are super important. Always use the right containers, certified ones for gasoline and diesel, and blue containers for kerosene. Store all fuels in a cool, dry place, away from where you live, and out of kit's reach. Avoid places with direct sunlight or extreme temperatures. Make sure the storage area is well ventilated to prevent fumes from building up. It's also smart to keep rotating your fuel supply to keep it fresh. Use up your stock and replenish it regularly within the fuel's usable life. And don't forget to use stabilizers for gasoline and diesel to extend their shelf life. 3. Listen up. Because this is important. You need to be ready for anything, and that means having enough food and water to keep you and your family going, no matter what happens. This isn't just about throwing a few extra cans of beans in the pantry. We're talking about serious, well-thought-out preparation. First, water. You've got to have enough. How much? Think at least one gallon per person each day. For half a year, that's about 180 gallons for each person in your house. This is for everything. Drinking, cooking, staying clean. And it's not just about quantity. You need bottled water, sure, but also store tap water in safe containers. Big barrels, small bottles, mix it up and have a plan B. Water filters, purification tablets, or even a way to boil water if you need to. Now, food. An average adult needs up to 2,500 calories a day. Over six months, that's 365,000 calories per person. This varies, of course, depending on age, gender, how active you are, and any special dietary needs. Stock non-perishables, canned goods, dried grains, freeze-dried meals, powdered milk, energy bars, dried fruits, nuts. Get a good balance of protein, carbs, and fats. And don't forget if someone in your family needs special food like gluten-free or diabetic-friendly options. Storage is key. Keep everything cool and dry. Use containers that keep pests and rot out. And organize it so you use the oldest stuff first. This isn't set it and forget it. You need to keep an eye on expiration dates and use things before they go bad. Have a system to track what you've got and what needs replacing. And think about how you'll cook this stuff if there's no power. A camping stove or grill can be a lifesaver. Also, consider vitamins and supplements, especially if your diet gets limited. 2. For those of you thinking about long-term bunker stays, it's crucial to focus on how you'll keep your spirits up and minds engaged. Being confined for an extended period can take a toll on your mental well-being. That's why including a range of entertainment and activities is not just a nice-to-have. It's a must-do for maintaining morale and mental health for everyone, regardless of age. Which kinds of entertainment should you consider? Think about books and e-readers. These are space savers and can hold a treasure trove of novels, educational materials, and self-help books to suit everyone's taste. Next, don't underestimate the power of board games and puzzles. They're fantastic for all ages and a great way to bond as a family. And then there's art and craft supplies. Whether it's drawing, painting, knitting, or other crafts, these activities aren't just fun. They're therapeutic. Music can be a lifesaver in these situations. Portable musical instruments like guitars, harmonicas, or ukuleles can provide both entertainment and a creative escape. Physical well-being is closely tied to mental health. So include compact exercise equipment like jump ropes, resistance bands, or yoga mats. Also... Having movies and TV shows preloaded on a laptop, tablet, or portable hard drive can be a great way to unwind. And for families with kids, it's vital to have educational materials and games to keep their minds active and learning. Why is all this important? Well, these activities help alleviate stress and anxiety, maintain a sense of normalcy and routine, encourage family bonding and teamwork, and keep the mind engaged and active. Storage and accessibility are key. You'll need to store these items where they're easy to find and use. And for anything electronic, make sure you've got a reliable power source or manual alternatives. Space in a bunker is precious, so choose items that are compact or multi-purpose. And ensure a good mix of individual and group activities to cater to different moods and preferences. 1. This applies to everyone having economic stability post-crisis. 
it's crucial to understand the importance of precious metals as a safeguard when our regular currency might falter. Gold, silver, and other precious metals have historically held their value, even in turbulent times, making them a reliable alternative for currency or bartering after a crisis hits. Gold is the top dog here. It's universally valued, dense, and carries a lot of worth in a small package. This makes it easy to store and move around. Silver, on the other hand, is your more budget-friendly option. It's easier to break down for smaller transactions, making it super practical for day-to-day -day dealings. But don't overlook other players like platinum and palladium. Though they're not as common in everyday commerce as gold and silver, they still pack a punch in value. Now, how should you stockpile these metals? Coins, especially those issued by governments, are a great choice. They're widely recognized and come with assured purity and weight. Bars are another option. They might give you more bang for your buck, but they're not as easy to split up for smaller trades. Jewelry, while not as pure, is a handy and barter-friendly form. How much should you stockpile? That depends on your budget and financial situation. Aim for a balance. It's also vital to have a mix of other supplies and assets. Diversify your metal holdings in different forms to be more flexible in various trading situations. Storage and security can't be ignored. Keep your metals in a secure, hidden safe at home or in a bunker. And think about spreading them out in different locations to reduce the risk of losing everything in one go. The beauty of precious metals lies in their intrinsic value. They've been a buffer against inflation and economic instability for ages. They're universally accepted and can be liquidated or traded almost anywhere. Plus, they're not tied to any single country's economic health, unlike paper currency. However, remember that their value can fluctuate. They should be part of a well-rounded preparedness plan that includes supplies, skills, and knowledge. Thank you for watching.